In today's episode of Handmade, we're going from sheep to shawl. Welcome to Handmade, a series about artisans and craftsmen who use their creativity and skills to make unique works of art. In our modern world, it seems like everything is mass-produced, pre-packaged, and available on Amazon. So it's easy to forget that some things are still made by hand. Not only will you see these artisans at work, but you'll hear about their creative process and learn how they acquired the skills necessary to make their unique pieces of art. So come on, let's go visit the studio of today's featured artisan. Darlene Brazil is a fiber artist who spins her own yarn and hand weaves it into blankets, shawls, and clothing. At one point in her life, she was a featured quilter for McCall's Woman's Magazine. She developed her love of fibers from her mother and grandmother. You know, just being around women like that, I mean, all of my aunts, you know, were great seamstresses. All the women in my family were always sewing something or quilting something. Uh, what are some of your favorite projects? I love to do a blanket on my big loom because it is a real sense of accomplishment when that is done. You know, the whole process takes so long and to see it to come together and to feel that garment around you, it's pretty, it's a real good sense of accomplishment. It makes you feel really good. You know, uh, fibers are usually divided into animal and non-animal or protein and non-protein fibers is generally the way that we look at it. These are alpaca fibers and as you can see there are, alpacas don't come in just one color. Everybody usually thinks of an alpaca as maybe this color or this color, uh, but you know, they go from whites, they have grays, they are spotted. Uh, off of one alpaca, you may have three different colors. This is wool, and it is unwashed wool directly off of the sheep. As you can see, there are some weeds in it because, you know, sheep are animals. They love to get in the weeds. They love to, to uh, roll around in the dirt, and this is unwashed. So this is what your fiber will look at when it's cut on this side is the cut end, this side is the end that's growing. There's two different kinds of angoras. There's angora goats, which is what this is from. This comes from a, a family in Beaumont, Texas. And then I can dye them. I've also got some green here. I've got this beautiful, beautiful, you know, deep purple. Very, very brilliant. Rabbit is the other angora that, and it feels like a cloud. You can't even actually feel this. It is so soft. Dye different colors. You know, I've got this color here. I've got, you know, this brilliant blue. Uh, this is bamboo, and I use bamboo. Sometimes you can uh, spin bamboo just exactly as it is. This I've dyed. Uh, you can spin it. It's normally white. But uh, yes, the bamboo that's in your backyards or at parks or whatever, that's where this comes from. Now, silk when it's harvested out of the cocoons. Sometimes they'll put it into what's called a hanky. Make a very fine fiber out of that. Silk really takes color well, really absorbs color well. The fibers are going every which way. The, the reason that we run it through a carding machine is because some of the fibers are going this way, some of the fibers are this way, maybe this way, but they all need to be blended all in the same direction so that when you spin it, you can spin your fibers like so and all in the same direction and that's how you get your yarn a good strong yarn Okay, so you can see that last that's blended in. When I, you know, it really adds a lot of color there, but when it looks a little bit out of place, but when I go to spin this, it's gonna blend in beautifully. And it's gonna spin 
pretty much like that. Okay. But this is the fiber that we just carded. I'm going to spin this very thin. Now, when I'm spinning here, um, I'm spinning one strand. What I will do when I'm spinning for a project is I will spend a couple of bobbins and then I will come back with the remaining fiber and spend a couple more bobbins. I will spin two bobbins together so that you've got a two-ply yarn. So let's see what this yarn is going to wind up looking like. This is the very first thing I ever wove and it was woven on one of these cute little looms that I'm sure a lot of you have seen before and probably used before. But basically you start by threading your yarn through the reed and then it goes into an eye and it goes through the middle of the eye on whichever shaft you need it to go on according to your pattern. This is where it gets very complicated because people will ask me, how long did it take you to weave that? Well, the weaving is the simple part. The, we the actual weaving where I'm moving the beater bar back and forth and feeding the yarn through uh, from the side to side, that's the, that's the simple part. Dressing the loom is a complicated part. To set this loom up for this color weave, color weave took me about eight hours. So according to the pattern, these are all different shafts. This particular loom has got eight shafts. Uh, I can, the number of eyes that I use on this, generally approximately 500, but sometimes it may be 700, sometimes it may be 400, depending upon the pattern and depending upon the weave, once again. On my little card, I've got the length of my warp, which read I'm using, how many eyes, that's these little things right here, how many eyes I'm going to be threading, how many shafts I'm going to be using, which shafts, and then I put uh, also my petals. For instance, this pattern I'm using right here, on my number one petal, I've got, I'm using shafts one and one, two, and four. Not three, but one, two, and four. So I've just finished using a lot of the reds in there, and I want to um, blend into something else. So I've got these other two bobbins that I'm going to be using, and they're very variegated. They've got the reds, a little bit of blues, and some pinks. I don't always work with two shuttles. Um, uh, this time I think I'm working with about eight shuttles. Generally, I'm, I'm working with anywhere between one and three shuttles. So you can see how I can take a pattern and I always start out with a plain weave at the bottom, and then I go into the pattern that I'm actually using. I can make a lot of different hand towels, different looking hand towels, out of the same warp. And so this is just using white. All these are the same, same warp, they're the same pattern. But I've, I've, I've used all white on the warp and the weft, and I've added a, you know, a, a stripe of yellow. Out of that same one, I used black on this one, and you can see that it has totally changed the look of that hand towel. Looks like a totally different one. And then this is the all white look. But that to me is fascinating that you can use one weave and come up with so many different designs and looks with that one weave. This is, I don't know if you want to call this a scarf or if it's a shawl. If you want to call it a shawl, you can use it for both, and I have. And there's a lot of movement that's going on in this. As you can see, the backwards and forwards, but you can see the uniformity with the stripes in there also. Love this piece. It's Huck Weave is the name of the pattern, and it is a wool. 
and it's very fine. But what I love about this piece is the blend, the marriage of the colors. There, it's all autumn cover colors. I love, I gravitate towards autumn colors, but you can see that there's royal blues, there's reds, there's rust, there's greens, and to me, this is a beautiful, beautiful weave and a beautiful blend of colors. Um, this was a takeoff of, this scarf is a takeoff of these colors. This is another piece that I use for inspiration. This came from Honduras, and I love, love, love this piece. I love it because of the precision work. But then I have, I'm going to do this myself, my own pattern, my own design. But it has inspired me to bring these colors together and to do something very similar. Um, sheep to shawl. These are all natural colors off of the sheep and the alpaca. There's a little bit of white thrown in also. White always gives some interest, gives it a little pop. And this is a freestyle weaving. You choose your colors as you're weaving. How does your creativity go into the selection of yarns and colors and textures and things like that? I've got some things around this room hanging on the wall. I keep up here for color and design. Um, I also tend to look at nature, and I look out, especially like in your springs and your summers, early springs when you've got all the different colors of greens going on. Uh, the, when the trees leaf out, it's not just a green, right. it's layers and layers of greens. And the same thing when you know the flowers are blooming, whether they're pinks, oranges, purples, or whatever, um, there's different Nature will group your colors. Besides color, you can also use texture, correct? Absolutely. Um, I get a lot of texture with my sheep to shawl weaving right. um, because I can spin that fiber however thick or thin or bouncy or with tails coming off of it, uh, curls coming off. I can do whatever I want to spin that fiber however I want it to be. And sometimes I will group my colors together and just let them sit for days, sometimes weeks, sometimes months. I may go over there and I may th uh, think, mm, this one out, or, you know, I really think this color here will go really well with it. That's a very common <laughs> expression that I hear from artists that they have to think about a project. It yeah. needs to percolate in their brain is an expression that I heard. Yeah, that's a good, that's a good description. But getting mm -hmm. back to the fibers, you can also mix different kinds of fibers together. I love doing that and there's a lot of reasons why you do that. Um, I spin off of whatever animal I can find a fiber that I like. <laughs> I've got some muskrat over there. <laughs> I've got camel fiber. Now, cam camel is really hard to spin because it's it's short pieces, and so you're you're you know uh, doing it very tight. You don't have the long uh, fibers that you might have off of a sheep. I spin llama. I spin uh, yak. I spin uh, alpaca, and I spin wool. I do not spin dog, and I do not spin cat. <laughs> do you ever make your own designs? I do. <laughs> Sometimes it's, it's by accident. <laughs> we call that a design flaw. That, that, that's my original design. Right. <laughs> but sometimes I'll look at something. It's just like when you cook. You've got a recipe in front of you, and you think, well, I think if I threw a little zucchini in there, I think that would really help, you know? Or I think this needs some sriracha or some chili powder. It's the same thing with weaving, okay? Um, and the same thing with spinning, too, because uh, you have got ideas in your head of what you want to happen, but you may not be able to find a pattern. So you can find a pattern that is somewhat similar, and then you can make it your own. Uh, you obviously spend a lot of time spinning and weaving. What do you yeah. like about it so much? It is the most calming thing. It's total serenity. Thank you for taking the time to invite us into your studio. Your woven pieces are beautiful and you're oh, very you. talented. Thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure to have you here.
Now that you've seen a weaver at work, I hope you have a greater appreciation of the time and skill that it takes to make something by hand. It takes passion, practice, and time. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Handmade, and I'll see you next time.